Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go through the uh, worship in the home for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost for July 19, 2020. This is from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America worship page. Good morning. <clears throat> Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah 44, 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the Sovereign of Israel, and Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there, besides me, any other God? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 86, 11 through 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. <coughs> when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with Christ, so that we may also be glorified with Christ. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that was seen is not hope. Who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The dominion of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? He replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of God's dominion. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them there is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his dominion all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the dominion of their Father. But anyone with ears, listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> we certainly know groaning right now. Indeed, in this difficult time, the whole creation seems to be groaning. Amid signs of awful division between people in our land, we're tempted to try to weed the field ourselves, to try to tear out and eliminate whatever we think, whoever we think, is a weed. But the parable warns us that we would be torn apart ourselves. We are both wheat and weed. Rather, as Isaiah says, only God is the judge, and we are to be witnesses to God's patience and mercy. Furthermore, Paul invites us to hope. Our groaning prayer is the very spirit of God in us, forming us to trust God as a dear father, bearing witness in us that because of Christ we are children of God. We groan for the world together with Jesus in the garden and on the cross. Then in his resurrection, Christ makes us to be pure wheat. In God's great harvest, we can be made into bread for our neighbor. Confident of God's care for us in the midst of the world's sufferings, we join together in the power of the Spirit to pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Responding to the words, teach us your way, with the phrase, you are full of compassion. God of the church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time many Christians cannot assemble to nurture one another for growth in faith. Tend your people, support bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Give us strength through your word. Lead seminaries to plan appropriately for fall semester. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the earth, we praise you for a wondrous creation. And we mourn that many lands and seas are groaning for rebirth. Nurture our green spaces and national parks. Shed rain where there is drought. Protect endangered animals from poachers. Show us how to care for your earth and its creatures. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given us in this country. 
and we mourn that many people here are poor and dispossessed, that we have allowed racism to distort our society, that violence breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities in which all people are equal and where disputes are settled without violence. Save us from preserving a past that has been harmful to many. Bring an end to warfare around the world and mend the torn fabric of humankind with your truth and mercy. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of humankind, we praise you for wherever health and happiness prevail, and we mourn that many people suffer. Each day thousands more contract the virus, renters face eviction, medical workers are exhausted, some of the sick have no access to health care, countless people are broken by sorrows. Open our hearts to your children who suffer in any way and show us how to serve them. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the seasons, we praise you for summertime, and we mourn that this year many hopes and expectations are denied. Give relief to those who suffer from the heat. Protect travelers from infection. Guard our children. Give rest to those with no vacation time, hope to those who are unemployed or underemployed, and patience to all who must endure this difficult time. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God, you are Abba, our loving Father, you are our sovereign of our lives, our redeemer, the rock on which we build. Hear us as we offer the petitions of our hearts. God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of time and eternity, we praise you for all who have died in the faith, especially this week, the apostles Mary Magdalene and James. We mourn our own beloved dead. At the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you and have a peaceful day.